wish to thank UNICEF, and commend you for this reflection, and for granting me the opportunity to share with you. As has been pointed out, no doubt one of the more debated topics in recent times has been that of the discipline of our children. More so, how do we go about it? What methods ought we employ? And as you heard in the last presentation, quite often the answer to such questions are sought in the Judeo-Christian tradition. And while Holy Scripture is the most proximate point of reference for discernment of the will of God, its value may lie not so much in what is written, but in how what is written is read. By this I mean we must take into account the worldview of the writers, and reading the text in its worldview, we must determine whether our worldview is the same as theirs. And where they are not, there are two possibilities. Either we change our worldview to fit theirs, or we recognize that the era of the text has passed, and we seek a new approach. There are several texts in Holy Scripture that can be construed to be referring to corporal punishment. And perhaps the greatest of note is the one you heard expounded so beautifully not long ago. Proverbs 13 and verse 24. He who spares the rod hates his son, but he who loves him disciplines him diligently. And as pointed out by several sources, the Hebrew word Shavat that has been translated rod has several definitions, rod, staff, scepter, tribe, etc. Thus, some interpret the passage as literally meaning to administer lashes, while others interpret it within the context of offering guidance. That debate can be never ending, with both sides providing empirical evidence as to why their perspective is the right one. An alternative passage from the same text may be helpful. When one reads Proverbs 23, verses 13 through to 14, it says, do not withhold correction from a child, for if you beat him with a rod, he will not die. You shall beat him with a rod and deliver his soul from hell. And then we can go further to Proverbs 29 and verse 15, which says, the rod and reprimand giveth wisdom, but the child left to himself brings his mother to shame. There are several things happening in these passages. I believe we can conclude without reservation that corporal punishment was indeed a part of the tradition of the communities from which the book of Proverbs emerged. However, 2915 gives some insight into the context in which such punishment was to be administered. To reprimand. To reprimand, one would presume that the person is conscious of the wrong he or she has done, that there was some prior instruction, and therefore he or she is now conscious, and therefore the, the administration of lashes is as a result of them having not done what they know they ought to have done. Within the Christian context, there are several passages that speak of beating. We encounter St. Paul many times in the book of Acts, and even referring to his experience in Romans 8, that beatings was a part of the everyday tradition of the empire. And we also experience, read of beating in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6 to 8. But of great import is John chapter 2, verses 13 to 22 where our Lord himself plaited some ropes and went into the temple and drove persons out. Perhaps it is against this backdrop that our discussion must take place. It may not be so much a question as to whether corporal punishment is right or wrong, but more a question of the context. Are children aware of the wrong they have done when they are being beaten? By this question I mean not if they are aware that what they have done is wrong, but whether there is a consistency in societal norms, or if there is one set of rules for children and then there is another set of rules for others. 
Is there still in our society a legitimate expectation on the part of children to be spanked when they've done something wrong? You see, the context in which the book of Proverbs and much of the New Testament emerged was a context in which children expected that this was what would happen if you did X, Y, or Z. Is that expectation still there in our society? I've raised these two questions to pinpoint the underlying issue. Has our worldview changed with regard to corporal punishment? I'm not going to attempt to answer it. That's for us to answer. I, expect there, I suspect there are enough dissenting voices out there to suggest it has. <coughs> Not that we succumb to dissenting voices, but the very subjects of corporal punishment, as you heard the mighty J not long ago, the children, are privy to the debate that is taking place. A debate which avails them to and raises awareness of their rights. Rights which suggest that the old worldview was wrong and ought to be a thing of the past. And so there's a socio-psychological dynamic that we must deal with within our present context when we're speaking about corporal punishment. Against this background, I wish to suggest that corporal punishment as a means of discipline may well be making its exit. Not necessarily because it was bad, because, as I mentioned, the debate can go on. There are many who will say, I benefited from it. But it is going because it has expended its time. The question is, with what will we replace it? Ultimately, discipline is best inculcated in an environment that is more or less homogenous, ideologically and value-wise. On the micro level, this is possible within homes. Perhaps, and I say perhaps, in some schools, given the cultural makeup and the social makeup, it is also possible. However, in the world of the 21st century, such value-based and ideological homogeny is virtually impossible unless pursued by force. And that will be taking us back to where we began. Our debate then is perhaps less about corporal punishment and more about forging the best possible value system for a society that is ethnically, religiously, culturally, and socially heterogeneous. Thank you very much.